Good afternoon and happy Sunday, everybody. This is Matt from the Essential Credentials, and I'm back with episode seven of the 2020 Collector Interview Series. It's been a lot of fun so far. I think the feedback's been great to learn different viewpoints from different collectors and some of their experiences. And this is the interview today is one that will probably be the, the most off the cuff, and that's on purpose because uh, I think. Everybody in life needs a friend who can A, always make them laugh, and B, uh, do things that are completely uh, out of left field and keep you on your toes, just like, you know, Kramer does in Seinfeld. I can't think of a better example of that. And he's been on the channel a couple of times, uh, one time uh, almost dying, the other time in extreme pain, and the third time, uh, he was feeling, you know, as normal as, as he could feel. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce everybody again to Ryan. What's up, man? Hey, what's up? Thank you for having me. And we'll hope for 100% less almost death. I didn't realize that was, I didn't realize that was episode seven. That's kind of cool. My, uh, my buddy George wanted to name his kid seven, but <laughs> then I tried to do it, and he got a little upset. He kept trying to tell me to name my kid Soda, but that would have been unfortunate. Although yeah. you know, you'd always think of something that's satisfying when you say your kid's name. So <laughs> <laughs> there's that. But uh, yeah, welcome, welcome back to the channel, man. Last time you were on here, we were talking about just the 2020 season and how crazy that's been. But I think equally as crazy has been 2020 as for collectors. You know, it's been just. I mean, as unpredictable of a collecting year, I think, as any of us have ever seen. And would you agree with that? It's been wild. Been very, very wild, man. But yeah, starting with, uh, I mean, we've had the whole um, Project 2020, that roller coaster. We've had supply shortages, um, card shortages. I don't know if you can really have a baseball card season when you can't get baseball cards, but it's been interesting. I just think that it's just like one thing after another. You know, we, we talk almost every day and the amount of crazy prices, crazy listings, um, but as well as amazing prices and amazing pickups. And I mean, it's just been, I mean, I feel like almost overwhelmed thinking of 2020, you know, as a collector. I mean, do you feel like, I mean, you've been collecting for, quite a while as as we've spoke about before you know you were collecting griffey way way back uh and then other mariners along the way i mean do you feel do you feel like you've ever seen anything quite like 2020 as far as you know, from a collecting standpoint no there's i don't think i can ever think of a time where prices fluctuated so wildly i know i know we discussed it and a few other people have discussed it but you know a guy goes out and he has a pinch hit uh, base hit and his price is quadruple. All of a sudden he's the next big thing. And yeah, I mean, top loaders and penny sleeves have become more valuable than gold. Yeah. Like it's, it's crazy. Like I've, there's never been a time where you, you couldn't be like, Hey, I'm going to go to target. I'm going to go to Walmart. I'm going to grab a pack. Well, let's not forget too the uh, yellow top loaders. Those are actually <laughs> pure gold. That's why they're yellow. Let's not forget about that. It's fun to get those relics from the past in the mail because people are running out of like legit supplies <laughs> to send to you. Vintage um, one of one sunstand. <laughs> oh jeez, I got I got one the other day and I was like, I'm keeping this because I've been throwing them all in the past, you know. And it's like, okay, this is pretty cool. Maybe we'll maybe we'll go back to a time when those are available and I won't get any more yellow ones. But <clears throat> do you you know do you feel like is there any year that's comparable to this year? You know, looking back on all your years of collecting, is there a year that you can remember where the hype has been so quick and the prices have fluctuated so drastically? Um, the only thing I can think of as far as prices have been rookie cards. I mean, they've always been there, whether it was Greg Jeffries back in 88 or Canseco in 86, mm -hmm. you know, Griffey in 89. Like uh, Kerry Wood and Corey Patterson were pretty big in the late 90s. Um, I got out of collecting from about, 02 to like 06 so I, I i couldn't tell you who was who was big and may or may not have flopped in that window but i'm sure there's with autographs and things like that i'm sure somebody had to have popped up i feel like ricky and keel belongs in that discussion but uh you know we will just leave that alone 
<laughs> yeah, but, now that uh, one is wild. Yeah, geez. that is a very wild story. Yeah, wild indeed, as far as not being able to get it to the pitcher. But I mean, <laughs> you know, it's just kind of fun to reminisce with you because <clears throat> you know you you kind of stayed in the game for for much much longer than a lot of us that kind of found our way back in and. Man, I mean, like we talk with Brent all the time. I mean, it's just like one one little thing, whether it's an award that somebody gets or some hype that's generated from a Twitter post they made. I mean, their cards just all of a sudden are more more in demand. And uh, I, I wonder if this is going to be the trend, you know, moving forward. Or do you think, you know, that I guess this is a question that I've asked almost everybody, but do you feel like that it's going to come back down to earth as far as like all the hype for the hobby goes? I think it will. I think a lot of this is due to the fact that people have nothing to do. I mean, I I would usually be taking my family to five, six baseball games over the summer. We'd go out to Dave and Buster's, maybe play some games, you know, go out for a pizza. But we're just stuck indoors. So you're kind of limited on your entertainment. So if you're a sports fan, what are you doing? You're just you're on ESPN. You're on uh, uh Christ, I can't think of any other sports-related website. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, I mean, MLB.com. I mean, I think a lot of us spend some time there looking through stats and, and just watching videos, stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, when you when that's all you have to do, you're just kind of bombarded with it, and mm-hmm. every little thing, it becomes the biggest thing ever. You're like, oh, my God, Jordan Alvarez, he is wearing low-cut socks today, and he <laughs> hits 382 on Fridays with low-cut socks. I need to go sell his cards immediately. What if you have cards of him in high socks, though? Do those carry the same value? No, they're they're a little bit on the. uh, They're a little more affordable, a little more accessible. Mm. Yeah, that's good to know. That's good to know. I mean, you're able to find all the subtleties in uh, in in collecting. So thank thank you for uh, pointing that out. Uh, (laughs) But. You know, I, one of the one of the craziest things that I've ever experienced with 2020, and you and I share this <clears throat> because we collect players who don't always make it in there. You know, like it's almost as frustrating as when the when you're you know this guy in your apartment complex knocks on your door and you open it and he's just just annoying postman. You know what I mean? And you open the door and you're like, oh geez, you know. It's I I, I basically kind of relate that to checking when you see a checklist come out by tops and you're like oh baby tops allen ginner chrome or tops buner yeah exactly exactly i mean you know so looking at that we we've had some some like opposite reactions it's been really funny when allen and ginter came out i was completely beside myself that tyler glass now wasn't in there but on the bright side because you should always be happy for your friends Buner made it into Allen and Ginter, right? Which was a huge surprise, I think, to both of us. But have you ever in your collecting life been so focused on checking new checklists when they come out? It's been a very long time. Usually, like I've, I've always been a Buner collector. He's been one of my favorite players since the mid-90s. But he was always kind of that, that third-rate PC of mine. Mm-hmm. And Griffey had always been number one. And Felix was number two. And this last year, year and a half, Griffey's kind of priced himself out of my budget, for at least for any cards that I want to pick up. So I decided to, to really go in on Jay. And the cards that I can't get at Griffey, I can pick up in Buner. But the downside is, whereas Griffey has a new card in every set ever made, Jay is just kind of, he hasn't had anything basically since 2004, other than the occasional, might have like a Panini set. But it's been fun to be able to look at a checklist and see that my guy showed up because these were the first Allen and Ginter cards I've ever been able to pick up a Buner. And like, it's the only mini bone I've ever had. Usually they're all kind of on the right. larger side, but I agree with that. It's been yeah. nice. <laughs> yeah. The, but I mean, I think it was awesome that, you know, and we, we talk about this all the time between, you know, you, me and Brent and everybody in some of the groups, it's like, being happy for your fellow collectors is hard when you're upset about like your guy not making it. But I thought it was really cool to not only see that Jay was in there, but watch your progress as you were seeing them pop up. Um, do you feel like, I mean, why do you think Jay's making it in? Because he, not only did he make it into Ginter, but you've shown off a pretty nice collection of tops archives as well. What's the, what's the deal, man? Why do you think they're deciding to put him in some checklists now? My only thought is that, 
they've got somebody in in tops um, in their they've got to have like a development or um, a, some sort of checklist department. Mm -hmm. They've got to have somebody that's just got a running tally or catalog of kind of middling like fan favorite type players and they go, all right, we haven't had a card of this guy in eight years. So let's throw him in there. Like, like, but on that end, like, I think that would be a great question for somebody who does that kind of job. Cause I imagine there's gotta be some sort of contract involved. Jay's obviously not in the MLBPA anymore. Right. Well, we've had that discussion too. You and me where I've asked you like, okay, you know what, why do you think, you know, Tyler Glass now is getting left out for all. I mean, I could list five to ten players that aren't rookies that you're like, I mean, really? So it's got to be really tough for them checklist wise. But awesome that Jay ended up making it as a as a short print, right? He was a short print uh, regular and mini. Am I yep. correct with that? Okay, but he didn't make Chrome, right? He did not make Chrome, which oh, but that that's going to be uh, an answer to another question you have later. Okay, but, all right. I'm all very. Right. <laughs> Well, we'll get to that then. But right. it's just been kind of interesting to pay so much attention to the checklist thing. I mean, I feel like the hype of this year has definitely heightened my interest in doing that because, you know, I've never collected modern until this year. And that's another thing I bet a lot of people can attest to saying that they're they're coming into modern as their first, you know, foray into cards. Um, I do have a question for you, though. It's kind of an advice question. If you were to give a piece of advice to, and this is coming from a guy yourself who's chased rainbows for Felix, who's gone after every little insert and parallel of him. If you were to give somebody advice, like a new collector coming into collecting, that's wanting to collect a, a pretty decent player. Um, what kind of advice would you give them as far as like not going into it full steam, trying to pick up everything? Spend a little bit of time researching. Um, I think eBay or even um, trading card database is pretty good because they usually have pictures of cards and just browse through there, kind of get an idea of what cards look like, um, have an idea of what your budget is. If you're, you know, if you're working a minimum wage job and you're 16 years old, don't be looking at an essential credentials from the nineties. Don't be looking at mirror golds. I mean, Look at cards that you like, but are attainable and they're in your budget. Or if you're really patient, you know, and you really want to, to be able to have stuff like that, be patient, be able to put your money aside for five months and be like, you know what? I'm going to have one card after five months, but it's going to be a doozy of a card. Mm -hmm. um, nice. Yeah. Like I, you got to do a little bit of research because not, there are a lot of cards. And when you, like we were discussing the other night, Sometimes the picture just sucks, whether it's a, a picture of Glasnow or a picture of Felix or Griffey. Sometimes you pick up a card and you're like, that blows. Why? Um, I, I had one earlier this year. It was, an, it was actually the Allen & Ginter mini glossy one of one Buner. I had never seen the glossy, and it's a very cool card. It's very cool that it's a one of one. But it just, it was a little underwhelming. And if it wasn't a one of one, I probably would have looked into it a little bit more and been like, all right, maybe that's not the card for me. But I mean, it's a one of one. You don't really have time to sit on it and ponder for all that long. Otherwise, it's going to be gone. No, you're right. You and I, you know, thank, thankfully your advice uh, made me kind of go after you know, a one one that stadium club. And the picture was cool, but nothing really looked different of the car. Like the foil of the name and tops was the only difference. And it was labeled a one one And I think, I mean, would you agree that with modern cards, even some of the rare ones, it's more about the number sometimes and the design. Like, let's talk about super factors. You've seen, you have one in your collection, you said, and we were chatting about this a couple weeks ago. I mean, do you feel like super factors live up to the name and, and the hype that they generate as far as design and whatnot? I think it depends on what you like as a collector. Um, for me, if it's a one of one and it's the, the pinnacle, if it's the creme de la creme, mm. I want it to shine and pop like nobody's business. And from that aspect, I don't think Superfractors really live up to it. 
I love the gold pattern they have on them, that little circular design. I think that is mesmerizing. And I think when you have it in hand and you look at it, it's incredible. But as you can attest, uh, there's, there is no shine to it. It's just got that cool, it's almost doofexy, but not, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, I, I agree with that. I, I was a little bit, uh, I was a little bit, you know, un, not underwhelmed because of the, uh, it, it being the first one was obviously, you know, it kind of holds a bit of a, uh, I don't know, prestigious, uh, feeling over all the rest of the cards, but yeah, I mean, it, it's kind of interesting when you look at modern, it's more about the rarity sometimes than, is, than the design. And we've yeah. spoke about that many, many times between all of us and also on this you know, podcast is that I think modern could definitely take a, a little bit more uh, 90s advice in a sense and try to you know spruce up their cards. But um, but it has been fun, you know, and that's I just figured it would be nice for you to give, give some advice out there because there's a there's just a lot out there. You know, if you come in and you're like, well, I think I'm going to collect, uh, you know, Kyle Lewis or Jacob deGrom or, you know, Trevor Bauer. There's a lot for you to sort through, man. There is a lot for you to sort through. Like I'm a very, I like lists. Um, like you sent me kind of the questions that we were going to have for here. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know how well you see. I broke down little bullet point answers or kind of ideas. Like I'm, I'm an organized person. I like to have my thoughts organized. I like to have my collection organized. My, you've seen my Lego shelf. It's organized. Yep. Um, I, are you okay? Did you die? I, I'm That's alive. my stick. Yeah, I know. I'm alive. Thank okay. goodness trying to look at our questions and knocked over the phone. <laughs> um, sorry, where was that? So, so you're, you're talking about being um, organized, right? Organized collector. I think that helps as far as navigating the waters. Um, I know, you know, we've talked, I like to collect yearly sets. I think it kind of helps to focus you in and it kind of, for lack of a better word, it's kind of like blinders when you go through the hobby. Like right now, the last couple of years, I've been trying to pick up the Stadium Club rainbow foil Felixes and the Allen and Ginter. Every year they do a hand numbered out of 25 mm -hmm. parallel. I've been trying to pick those up and also the uh, Rip Card exclusives, which kind of makes it a little, sometimes you're not as excited because those cards don't pop up every day. If you're only looking for one card, you're not going to be putting in bids every day, but when it pops up, you're really excited and you get to have the thing that you've been trying to build towards. I like that. So basically if we're going to make three bullet points so far, you said, do your research, be organized and have a goal in mind. Let's say for the third bullet point, as far as like advice for people coming into collecting modern, if you were going to give them like two to three sets to focus on first to kind of get their feet wet, knowing everything that tops puts out and panini we can say because we've started you and i have both started to warm up to panini's designs and and you know their pictures i think they do a good job of that too where would you say to start for a new collector coming in what two or three sets to focus on first well i mean if you're a newer collector you're probably not it's probably not wise to you don't want to go out and buy triple threads or museum collection or any of the things that might have a very hefty price tag. Mm -hmm. I think heritage year in and year out is the best thing Tops does. I think the refractors that they do, the refractos, mm -hmm. black refractos especially, <laughs> are the nicest cards modern has to offer, hands down. I think Allen and Ginter does a great job. It's a fairly affordable product. You get a lot of cool parallels if that's what you want to chase. You get the different mini cards. You got I think they've done the foil versions now. Um, they got the glossy ones. If you want to chase the one on one, you get the wood ones. They got a little bit of everything for you. But don't forget, if you really want to broaden your collection and expand it, just move in next door to a neighbor that has a lot of stuff and just kind of walk in and take whatever you want from their house. And that's really all you need to do. Me walk in or just like open the door and slide right yes. in there and say, can I have this? Thanks. Before they even answer and just take it and off you go. Um, you know, hopefully it's not a neighbor that like spills something on the counter and then like <laughs> puts everything, milk and cereal included into the drawer. That would be a shame, right? And ruin all your cards. Oh, that would just be a nightmare and a half. Uh, <laughs> 
one thing that you also have, you know, done a little bit more this year, um, and something this kind of how I met you actually for the first time was uh, your YouTube channel. And you know, before I, I kind of show off some of your some of your videos, you know, you you've kind of been going kind of back and forth with the, like your goals for your YouTube channel and and, and whatnot. I mean, what. Why do you decide to, to do that, and and what have, what have you enjoyed the most about making some of those videos? Why have I decided to change the goals, or like why why like why are you still making videos? Because you oh, and I talk I you. like you know, ah, mail days are really not my thing. I mean, what what are they for? Like, is it an outlet for something, or just for your own entertainment? It's by and large for my own entertainment. Um, some of the like like a lot of people, none of my friends really collect my wife. She kind of smiles and nods when I bring home a card. She's like, that's nice, honey. <laughs> my my daughter, she looks at me and goes, that's nice, daddy. I'm going to go back to playing Roblox. Does All Griffey right. like the cards, though? That's, that's the main question. I think if I put some kibble on them, he would really enjoy them. <laughs> okay. But he doesn't seem to care that they shine. Ah, bummer. But, no, I like to, I don't know, like I, I see things when if 99 people are doing fairly similar things i want to be i want to do something that's just stupid <laughs> and my a lot of my videos are just stupid and they kind of just let me branch out on there right well you have you have a personality i mean again if i was going to liken you to somebody the, the cosmo kramer reference is quite like i think it's quite good you know, I, I I do look forward to actually meeting you in person someday to see just how like how on his level you are. I do <laughs> want to make sure that you know we show this comment off because Ryan's got a really good point here. They uh, have some cool uh, penguins in there. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. There happens to be one on my shelf outside. Believe it or not, I don't know where that came from, but uh, but I mean you do like to just do things off the cuff and and that. People, people maybe think to do, but don't have the cojones to actually try. And I've got a couple of really good examples that uh, I'm sure I could share with everybody. But I do want to show your YouTube channel off. And and while I get to it, Ryan, you decided to rename it from Mariner's Collector to Cards and Recreation. I think that's yep. kind of an obvious reason why. But what was what like? What's the goal going forward? Because you spent a lot of time getting that intro made too. Are you trying to to gear it towards like a, a different feel with your newer videos? Um, I don't know about a different feel, but I wanted to, I think one Mariner collector was very, it boxed me in a little. So mm -hmm. I felt like if I were to do something different, it's like, wait a minute, this isn't Mariner related, but I think cards and recreation kind of, it affords me the opportunity to do card videos. Or if I want to go out and make a video with my daughter that's recreational i can throw it up on my channel and if somebody wants to downvote me that's fine <laughs> yeah, downvoting Down is an interesting interesting concept you know uh <laughs> i can't imagine why somebody would want to do something like that that's uh, why you take them off your videos <laughs> <laughs> but i i do want to point out a video if it, if everybody watching and do, whoever does watch can goes to this channel um, rather than smashing the subscribe and like button or down like down vote button, I would check out this video right here. This was one of the first ones I saw of Ryan's Donner's Elite, the Griffey years. I feel like Ryan does a really good job of going through each insert and describing how they changed design wise, how they stand out um, or don't stand out toward the end of the Elite series. But I told Ryan this many times. Ryan, I think you. You know, you have a talent of going through each of these cards and breaking them down in detail. And that's been a lot of fun to see. You know, you go this route. And then, of course, there's these type of videos. Um, you, you and I and Brent have these conversations a lot about, you know, <laughs> some of the different eBay sellers out there. Where where, <laughs> where did this video come from, man? How, how did you <laughs> decide to do that? If I remember right, that one stemmed from a seller that wanted a ridiculous price on a card. And I, there were, like I went through the sold listing examples and messaged a seller and said, hey, you're you're asking for the moon. This thing is selling historically for like 
12, 14 bucks, you know, whatever it was. Mm -hmm. Any chance you can meet me in the middle? Like, can we figure something out? And it's like, nope, that's what the price is. That That's what it's going to be. We can't, uh, there's no wiggle room. It's kind of like the middle seat of an airplane. We can't wiggle at all. <laughs> uh, I, uh, I, yeah, I think we all can agree that we've had those kind of stories in collecting, you know what I mean? Where we just see these prices, we're like, oh my gosh, I don't even know if I can, I should ask, but I don't know if, I don't know if I have it in me to do so. But to go off of that, sometimes it, if you don't want me to show this, just let me know. I don't think we're, we're going out of bounds or anything here, but sometimes you're even motivated to send a message to a seller, right? Um, I have been known to do that. And if, if I may, I would like to show one example that everybody watching, I think, knows where this is, what this is going to be. But this is to motivate other people to try to have a little bit of fun out there. Because if there's one thing that you've done that you do very well is you always keep things light. Like, I don't feel like collecting has ever been something that stresses you out. Do you feel like, you know, what I'm about to show is just a way that you're able to just kind of never take the hobby too seriously? Oh, very much. Yeah, it's... You, yeah. <laughs> All right. I can't, so, even, I can't even think of a good way to segue into that just yet. Right. Well, I'm going to show the picture of from the auction, and then I'm going to read, if, if you don't mind me being the teacher I am, I'm going to read what you said. Unless you would like to, you know what, would you like to do the honors and, and be the narrator here? It's up to you. Let's see how well I can see it on my screen. All right. Do you know which, do you have a picture of it here, or do you want me to just share it? I don't have it on my phone okay. anymore. All right. All right, so what I'll do is I'm going to share the picture of the bat, and uh, let's see here. So we'll go here. Uh, yeah, this, let's do Oh, this. oh, oh, that's not the one I thought you were going to do, so yeah. I might have yeah, that one. No, yeah, can you can you pull up the uh, the message for this while people are looking at it? Yeah. It'd be, it'd be better if you read it out loud. I so, thought you were going for the, the, the no, card. No, 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 that one, that one gets to, <laughs> that one's too good to share. <laughs> people are going to have to reach out to you. So, um, everybody looking right now, this is an auction on eBay that was just titled Jay Buhner, and there's a picture of a bat, which I believe is signed by him. Am I correct with that? Right? I believe so. Right here on the barrel. Okay. Do you happen yeah. to have what you sent him? I do. So I can... All right. So, what I'll do is, uh, would you... go for it. Would you do the uh, honors? Hello. I, I just had a couple of questions about this item. The listing is for... Jay Buna, but the picture is of a baseball bat. It, is the bat how J Jay Buna will be acquired? And if so, once I have purchased Jay Buna, will you go out and conk him on the head with the bat and then deliver him to me? Or am I purchasing the bat and it's up to me to go out and find Mr. Buna myself, then bop him with the bat? What if you... <laughs> <laughs> What if he runs? Even retired, he is likely in better shape than I am. I'm doubtful I could catch him. Thank you for clarifying, Ryan. And here is the message in all its glory. And I just uh, want to say that, that Ryan shares these with us, and I had my father in tears reading this out loud to him. Ryan, where in the world do you get the motivation to do this? Boredom. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. I just think, yeah, I mean, I just think it's uh, it's one of the most entertaining parts of my day, and, and I'm calling for a Ryan's Greatest Hits that I can go back and look at. Um, it, it's the part that I, as, I know I, you haven't read a ton of my stuff, but I shared a little bit of my my writing with you. Yes. I'm, I believe language is very important, the words that we choose, and when I see wordings or auction titles that are a little misleading or they just leave it open for a lot of interpretation. Like there's, I need to get in there somehow and be like, well, I know what you probably meant. However, I could interpret it this way. <laughs> and, so, and now actually I, another one I want to highlight, I'm not going to show it because I don't feel like digging for it is we've talked a lot about these digital cards, which is completely preposterous. So would you please, like, give us the the uh, scene by scene 
of how that all went down with that message you sent to that one eBay seller? I think people need to hear this one and then we'll move on. Sadly, I, I think I deleted the message, so I don't have that one anymore. Um, oh, bummer. But effectively, there was a seller selling digital cards and I hate these with a passion. Not so much because they are being sold. I mean, if, if people want to buy a picture of a card, that's fine. The problem is, one, you could just take a screenshot of your phone and now, bam, I have the exact same card you just spent $70 on on my phone. But two, it floods my listings. And do you know how many times at like 11 o'clock at night I have been sitting there with one eye half propped open, I'm barely staying awake, and I see this sweet card and I'm like, oh my God, I've never seen that. How am I going to get that? And I click on it and I realize it's a digital card. And I'm like, oh, you got me again. You got me again, internet. But so this time, like I, I saw that and I was just like, hey, um, I see you have a fake card there. Any chance you are, uh, do I have to be, do I have to pay with real money or can I send you a picture of money? And like the guy was in good spirits about it. He messaged back and almost Ryan style. It was just kind of smarmy and sarcastic. And yep. I gave it up to him. He took it in stride, but yeah, I hate those things. Yeah. It, I'm right there with you, man. Because again, with a guy like glass now who doesn't make it into a lot of checklists, I've seen some really cool cards. I'm like, Oh my gosh, that's the coolest thing. Like rainbow background, deep purple background, hair flying digital card patched and autographed ones especially how do they do game used digital cards explain that to me i'm i'm waiting for the day that you send tops a message i would like to get a screenshot of that too please they're just going to be like dollar dollar bill y'all how much we make off of that just attach 100 digital dollars and see what they send you back (laughs) yeah no that's that's uh that kind of leads me into the to the next question you know uh one of the best things that i think you bring to just our group of friends is that we can always laugh and it's almost impossible not to laugh like when they were filming one of my favorite bloopers of all time when they were filming that episode where kramer smoke has a lifetime of smoking in 72 hours and they kept trying to film that scene and jerry could not like he looked at him he started laughing like it's almost like when you send those messages even if i wanted to try not to laugh i literally break out Look away. cracking up yeah <laughs> it's my twinkle uh but I mean, what, what else about, what else about the hobby, you know, kind of makes you laugh? I wanted to give you the opportunity to, rather than the the way we, we are constantly messaging each other, right? About just the things that we see that are completely ridiculous and without shouting anybody's name out, because we're not here to do that. What type of trends do you see nowadays? Because there's so many new people coming into the hobby, right? That are just, it's like any, anytime you get into something, you got to educate yourself before you hop into a group of people and start interacting. What are some of the goofiest things that you're seeing more of this year than in the past? Um, I don't know if I've just taken more notice of it, but I swear I feel like post hijacking has just taken on a life of its own. <laughs> you know, somebody's excited. They got they got their their white whale card or their dream card. They got they opened up a box or they're about to buy a box, and inevitably somebody will go on there and be like, "Oh, that's." That's a cool card. I've got mine. Would you like to look at this? And just, you know, like those crack me up. Like there's just make another, make your own post. And then you've got your own thing. Like don't take someone else's shine. Like let them have their two seconds. Yep. Oh, hi buddy. That, that, that definitely is something that you, me and Brent po- picked up. And I don't think it's ever really intentional, but no. I, th- I think when you're, you know, looking the other side, when you're sitting at home and you're collecting by yourself for 20 years and all of a sudden you f- you're at home during the pandemic and you find social media, you, you are like, OK, well, I want people to enjoy these cards with me. We all have experienced that. You know, that's why we share posts is because we want our friends to see the cool things that we're getting. But, yeah, I think there's like etiquette that some people, uh, you know, sometimes forget about and. I'm guilty of it, you know, or guilty of calling people out. There was a Freddie Freeman post, and I was that some dude's like, "Look at all my one ones," and I was like, "Dude, this guy just picked up some base cards. Relax." And he got all upset, and but it's that kind of stuff, you know. I think uh, I, I, at this point, it's just hilarious, you know. Um, it's almost like 
if you were to be walking downtown and see somebody break out a blue steel like right in the middle of your path that you're walking in it's almost on that level you know what i mean it's hard to it's hard to top that level of uh post hijacking but uh that one's right up there with pay attention to me you know if anybody watching gets that reference i know that ryan did <laughs> uh oh here we go hey look who it is <laughs> near mint mussings i'm, gonna I'm unfamiliar plug, with that i'm gonna plug my channel yeah he's probably gonna plug all that amazing vintage that he's got on his channel now i can't imagine anybody want to talk with a guy that collects vintage but you know what else i like it's it's on a similar mold yeah it's it's like the distant cousin of post hijacking <laughs> i'm new <laughs> okay you see how you're seeing this yeah it's okay we'll teach you the ways in near mint musings it's all good <laughs> um it's very similar to the post hijacking and the look at me, but let's say I go on and I post a 1996 Ray Ordonez and then instantly somebody comes on. You collect Ray Ordonez? I have this. And they just start showing you like their three cards they have. And it's like, that's cool. You know, I appreciate it. And don't get me wrong. Sometimes that's how you, you find the card that you didn't know you were looking for. But it kind of reminds me of when, you know, when you go to a store and you know exactly what you want or you just want to browse and you yeah. get the, the pushy salesman there <laughs> yeah. and they're just like, oh, can I, can I interest you into something? I actually don't even talk to most uh, shop owners if I go to a new LCS just for that reason. Like I'll go in and they go, hey, how can I help you? Like, I'm oh, just browsing. Oh, where are you from? Uh, up by Seattle. Oh, I got some Mariner cards and they pull out their dusty junk wax Mariner stuff because nobody's ever wanted it and then I feel obligated to look through it. Right. <laughs> you know, I, it, it's funny that you mentioned that because there, there's definitely, uh, there's definitely, you know, I mean, shop owners are trying so desperately to, to keep in business. So it's like they can't help themselves. But um, go into a shop and just make up some crazy story about yourself and they'll be like, okay, maybe, <laughs> maybe, maybe this guy needs to just kind of do his own thing. I think he'd be good at that. You know, just go in there and come up with something completely wild. <laughs> Not quite sure what this means, but uh, I think he knows what you that you know what it means. <laughs> yep, Boom, right over my head. Oh, this is a good one here too. Yeah, it's like the mall kiosk guy trying to cool your hair. <laughs> exactly, exactly. That's perfect. See, I, I went and tried to do that once at a mall kiosk, and I had ended up with really tall hair, and a bird flew into it. It's just. It, did it catch on fire right after when you tried to smoke a cigar? <laughs> yeah! <laughs> uh, Hold on. Just so you can have your dream of seeing my dog. There he is. Hi, buddy. Griffey. No. Uh, you were saying, uh, too, you know, just <laughs> you were out you were out walking Griffey one time, right? And everybody comes up to you thinking that, like, it, you're the greatest thing ever and wanting to tell you there. Oh, yeah. stories just like, like with card collectors right yeah, oh my god it is exactly like with cards like people will come up oh you have a corgi my uncle's cousin's mailman has a corgi it's so adorable <laughs> it's right up there like when you when i used to take my daughter out to like the mall or something and everybody went she had the curliest hair and all these like older ladies would always just come up and just start touching her hair I'm like dude she's not a doll get off my kid i don't know you <laughs> That's funny. Here we go. Here's a suggestion. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one. That's a good one. I mean, I, I get, you know, for anybody that's watching, I mean, we're having some fun with this because you need to be able to find the lighter side in the hobby. I mean, it's so easy to take this hobby too seriously right now because anything that involves money can get stressful and be taken too seriously. So, that's part of the reason I really wanted to have Ryan on here because he certainly reminds me to maybe take it easy a little bit. It's not such a big deal, um, which I think is super important. Um, all right, last last question here. We, we can kind of unpack this for a few minutes, but, uh, you know, just like Kramer being the anomaly of a person and friend that he is comes into your apartment when it's unlocked without knocking, steals anything that's in your apartment just like it's his, Um Wakes you up at 4 a.m., 3 a.m. to go do something because he's bored. You know, those kind of anomalies. How would you see, like, what are some of the strangest things you've started seeing in the hobby, like, that didn't exist before this year? What are a couple that come off the top of your head? Oh, dude, I totally misread your... When you asked me this question, 
I thought it said animalities. I thought it was a Mortal Kombat conversation. I had oh, like a girl over here lined up. Anomalies. <laughs> ah, crap. Are you being serious right now? No. Okay, I was going to say, because uh, I, was, I was hoping you'd go down that path and just see what happens. <laughs> um, uh, sorry, I, I laughed at myself. Can you repeat the question? Yeah, sorry. of course. I know, so, it's right my arm as I do this. That's that's great. Well, maybe he can answer it for us. Now, what are some of the weirder things that you've seen pop up, you know, since since 2020 came around? Things that you aren't used to seeing prior to this year. It's all with all these new collectors and whatnot. Um, I don't attribute it to the new collectors per se. Or maybe it is. Maybe it's, uh, it might be a combination of them. I think with a lot of people presumably needing money, we have seen one of the largest influxes of pimp cards that I've ever seen. I mean, how many times have, on the groups we've been like, hey, this guy's selling off this amazing set that he's got. Have you got your guy? And I've never really seen that. As, as far as the sheer volume of it, when you see like amazing set break after amazing set break after amazing set break. And I don't think it's necessarily related to the new collectors, but maybe they're trying to take advantage of the new collectors out there wanting these cards. Yeah, that's a really good point, man. We've seen like with the Allen and Ginter out of 25, there's a guy that's just been listing gobs and gobs and gobs of them. Like, I've got a couple of Ankeels and, and just you picked up a bunch of Felix and, and whatnot. It's been, it, it's really allowed me to say. We had the, uh, look how many we had that there. embossed gold refractor set break. Oh, geez, that's right. There yeah. was the uh, preferred, um, uh, prize collections. Mm -hmm. That's right. Oh like man, this. that was that was a fun day. <laughs> like everybody, like I was so sad too because I already had Jay, and I was just like, mm. <laughs> I want to be a part of this. I almost wanted to pick somebody up. I think uh, <laughs> Jose Cruz had two versions. He had the um, he's got the regular one and the preferred power subset yeah. version, and I think he wanted like thirty or forty bucks for him, and pretty reasonable price. So, like he was willing to make a deal, but I just. I didn't want to pony up for Jose Cruz that day. Yeah, right. That's your side, side, side hustle, right? Yeah. yeah exactly. He's like my guma, guma. <laughs> I, I can respect that. I can respect that. Um, yeah, I mean, looking looking at this year, I think it's it's that's probably you're right. Been the biggest been the biggest anomaly is just how much has get, been listed in this last year. Like I'm so looking forward to everybody's top 20, top 25 pickups of this year, because in any other given year, would you agree with me here? Maybe half of the cards that people are going to show off in these top 25 you pick up. I mean, I feel yep. like it's just been beyond the best year for most of us. It absolutely has. I don't know if you, uh, if you remember, but back in January before the near death on your channel, which I'm attributing that all to you, by the way. Um, before, before I had that, my plan was to focus 2020 on base cards. Like I wanted to just appreciate what I had and fill out the base cards and just kind of enjoy them. And I ended up, like I said, being stuck at home. Um, I've been one of the blessed, fortunate people. I'm in grocery management, and grocery is one of the few thriving businesses in this economy. Mm -hmm. So, like, not only have I not hit any road bumps, like, financially, it's been a fantastic year for me. So, I've been fortunate enough to be able to have some extra, well, disposable income to pick up some really big, big cards that you'll see later on. Awesome. Yeah, no, you've uh, you've done quite well for yourself, and uh, I think everybody could agree with this. I mean, if you look at 2020 and then you you think prior to when it started, we all have like that one card that we want to get, right? Maybe one or two cards. Like I would love to get this card this year. I feel like m many of us have gotten five or six of those. You know, those cards that you see like once in a lifetime, once a year cards, and there's just been gods of them listed within this year. It's been wild. It really has been, man. Um, and I'm really excited for people to see, and for obviously for me too, to see your uh, top Felix cards because there's some quite nice cards in there. That's all I'm going to say, rather than giving it all away. But before we move into rapid fire, Ryan, I mean, you just said talked about your goal going into 2020. What is your goal going into 2021 now, though? I feel like it's got to be a little bit different, right? 
I want to round out, like I said um, earlier, I like to collect runs of cards. Like I like to collect the Allen and Ginter numbered out of 25. I would love to, to pick those up, the rest of them. I would love to pick up the rest of the Stadium Club um, rainbow foils that I don't have a Felix. I might try and delve back into Griffey a little harder, but not if he's still where he's at right now price-wise. He's starting to come down a little bit. Probably not on the, the really big cards, but kind of those second tier, third tier inserts have started to come down a bit. Mm -hmm. um, I would like to, I would love to get my daughter into it a little more like she used to be. And then she developed or uh, discovered online gaming with her friends. And now she's just kind of like, no, I'm okay. I don't, I don't care. But I would love to, do, I would love to, to share my passion for this with her. You think Star Wars like Mandalorian and whatnot would be the path to that? It could be. Like she she loves Star Wars. Actually, uh, she hasn't watched The Mandalorian with me. Her favorite is episode three when Anakin catches on fire. Just morbid kid. She's like, I, I like the part where, where he, and he he his face goes. <laughs> I'm like, all right. I Little think they creeps. made cards of all those movies, didn't they? Don't they have a, like, yeah, I assume they do. Yeah, that's. That could be fun. I know, you know, you and Brent and, and are big into The Mandalorian, and I've been kind of waiting to get in. I'm actually, tonight is when I'm starting my subscription to start watching all the episodes. So I'm quite excited to see where they go, and uh, and that would be a fun thing, that, you know, finding something that you guys share and also that they have cards of. So those will be some fun episodes right there, those kind of box breaks uh, or pack breaks or whatever. I've got a series I want to do with her, and she was all on board. Um, she actually has a YouTube channel, but she only has like three videos and she never wants to put two seconds of effort into it. I had an idea to do Mad Libs with her and we would alternate. One of us would ask the question. The other would give the, the word. And at the end we would read them. And I want to be able to, to do some of those videos on my channel because she doesn't want to do it on hers now. That'd be fun. I I've, I've talked about this before too. I, I love when, you know, people involve their their children in, in the hobby or just in their in their lives on youtube or whatever just because i think it's it it's important to keep the kids interested in what's going on here you know yeah well, she's very impressed in line. i uh i've opened up many lines of credit in her name to fund my hobby so <laughs> well you gotta do what you gotta do man especially in 2020 right with the, that box she's gonna learn about it later on yeah, your credit's terrible. Why? Well, your dad needed a five thousand dollar box of cards of top series one. That's where we're headed, right? Flagship. Um, yeah. Well, I, yeah. I think I think you've highlighted some really good things, Ryan. You know, I again, I, I appreciate your ability to always find the lighter side in collecting um, and not just never take the whole hobby too seriously. That's a really big piece of advice that I want everybody to take with them. Is uh, you know, you got to keep it fun. You got to keep it light um, and try not to get too stressed out about it because it's easy to do that this year. We're already stuck at home and stressed out because things aren't normal. You know, I'm starting to get even crazier because there's no stinking hockey announced yet. It's driving it's, me absolutely bonkers. Sometimes so, you got to sometimes you got to sit back and you got to just appreciate it. And you're not always going to get the chocolate babka. Sometimes you get the cinnamon babka, but you still it's a delicious treat. Or the whole muffin instead of just the muffin top, right? That would be unfortunate. <clears throat> well, let's move into the, into rapid fire, Ryan. Uh, quite excited about this because I knew it wasn't going to be easy for you. And I like making things Giddy difficult up. on you. <laughs> That's right. Giddy up. Uh, first off, top three pickups of 2020. All right. This is gonna be, I, got, I got good ones. I hope so. I hope they don't suck. <laughs> we'll see if I can get some... Quasi decent lighting. Oof. My first big pickup of the year was the '96 Mirror Gold J Buner. Wanted the Griffey of that um, since '96. I will never own the Griffey of that. You could sell your house, <laughs> <laughs> or, or Griffey, but maybe don't yeah. do that. Don't sell Griffey. Oh no, he's no. I wouldn't do that. Maybe I'll just uh, spray paint him gold, and he can shine like the card. Yeah, there you go. But Perfect. That was my first one, and that was the one that I actually broke my um, base card thing with. I wanted that popped up, and I was like, 
I'm going to do it. Like I, I got out of this surgery. Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to treat myself. You know what? This year, every time we set a goal, you, me, Brent, I know you're listening, Brent, Ryan, it's like, okay, I'm only going to, I'm only going to get these. I'm going to wait. And all of a sudden what happens? Like, as we talked about, I, I'll show it off on this channel later, but like, I'm done buying Tyler glass now. It's like, oh, crap. <laughs> you know, it's where like, it, it happens like that all the time, man. Anyways, just want to mention that it always happens that way. So no guilty, no guilty on your part. So my next one, it was, it's the uh, successor. Well, two years removed from that one. It's the 1998 Mirror Gold J. Buhner. I actually picked up the whole run of them from a seller. And I was able to talk them down off of their ridiculous price. And the shine on this thing is ungodly. They can see that in space. Like if there's ever a foggy day, I'm pretty sure I can just put that car on a lighthouse light tower and the ships will safely come into harbor. That's you're probably right. We we have a lighthouse here. If it ever runs out of light, I'll make sure to uh, ask for that card to borrow just for a minute. <laughs> All right. <laughs> My, uh, I got it. Hold on. I had my third one here. Oh, it's right behind this refrigerator. What the uh, cards don't live behind the fridges? Oh no! As I dropped my card, that oh, was karma. That was karma. <laughs> Is the Crusade red? This one I worked to get for a while. Uh, Kevin Conley, and he's in a couple of the groups that we're in. He had. Two of them. And it was probably like at least a year. Like he posted up his stuff and I was like, dude, uh, any chance you want to part with one of those? Because I have the green and the purple. And he didn't want to do it. He's like, ah, I'm, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to G word these things. Wow. I'm like, ah, all right. I'm never going to get that. And then it was back in like April or May, I think, this year he posted him up again and I, I gave it another shot. I said, Hey, uh, Hey Kevin, any chance you've reconsidered and you might be willing to part with one of those? And he's like, yeah, you know, I was, I was still planning on G wording these, but, um, God, <laughs> 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 um, <laughs> yeah, he, uh, he decided with the way the pandemic had screwed up grading that he was willing to part with one and we came to a, a reasonable agreement and now I've got the rainbow. Any idea where that card was uh, at his house? Where do you think he found it? Um, I think, I think he found it like in a box, but I don't know. It could have been, I know there's like, I know washing machines have been pretty good places to find cards. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, my wife's sewing machine seems to spawn a lot back there. Um, spot. What about yeah. chest freezer, bomb shelter, stuff like that? <laughs> I feel like they're, I mean, go check everywhere, people. You don't know where they're going to pop up. You do not know. Well, that's awesome. Those are three uh, top notch cards right there, man. Anybody that collects 90s would be happy to own one of those. So, I, again, that proves that 2020. I mean, could you ever imagine getting all three of those in the same year? You know, the cool part is, like I said, I've been collecting since the mid to late 80s. And I collected all through the 90s, but I didn't collect, like, I was never a big Donruss guy. So I'd never seen the Crusade until, like, six, seven years ago. Really? And I knew about the uh, the mirror golds and the, you know, the mirror reds and blues. Never owned any of them. I'd never seen one in person until I picked this one up. So it's just kind of cool to, to have cards that, like, I was collecting heavily in 98 but i was buying ultra like that was what i was spending my my money on mm -hmm. yeah if boxes were more affordable back then you could kind of go for a box and hopefully yeah. get something really nice but nowadays it's like i mean those boxes especially are going to have to pay out the wazoo for so all right let's go to in your opinion the biggest steal that you've had of 2020 i don't even know what this is going to be honestly i was thinking about this and i 
I'm only. I had a couple that I think were pretty good. This was the only one that truly, I think, felt like a big steal. And it is the 97 score Premier Club. Those are gorgeous, man. Getting a decent amount of shine. It's, this was mislabeled on eBay. And the front scan, like you couldn't tell anything by it. It was just one of those kind of look like this. Let's see if I can get shitty lighting so it'll... Right. It, look, it looked like the silver kind of, right? Yeah. yeah. But he had he had the back of the card scanned in. So I saw Premier Club. And I think I picked it up for like three bucks free shipping. Wow. And even though, like, I don't know what a J usually goes for. I think there were like two others that were listed and they were listed for like 50, 60 bucks. I don't know if they sold at that price, but three bucks for a card that you're never going to find. I will take it. Yeah, I, I hate you right now. That's all I'm <laughs> going to say. I don't collect A-Rod much anymore, but that one is one that just eludes me, and it goes for quite a lot. So, Awesome. Awesome. I would say that it qualifies as a steal. How about the most unexpected card of 2020 in your collection? One that you just heard, like, no way. This one you will like. And I'm, I'm going to go into a, the little story that you've already touched on a bit. So back in January, you had me on. And I ended up having an emergency surgery. I had a collapsed lung um, stemming to a, I have a um, health condition that uh, causes my arteries to just snap. It's a gene genetic mutation, which technically makes me an X-Men. Right. Except for instead of like optic beams and regenerative factors, I have the ability to bleed internally and fall on the ground. Not, not as effective <laughs> in stopping... <laughs> villains well i mean you can trip uh, them you can trip them i mean i was getting away and then this guy was on the ground and, <laughs> damn it it's like a bad appeal that's right see um but i was in the hospital and i i had nothing to do like i the first couple of days my my wife and daughters were in there with me and they hung out but after a while i was like just like you got to take the kid home like let her go sleep in her bed so they went home and I was up and I was doped up on, um, I can't remember the name of the, it wasn't morphine. It was something in a drip that every six minutes I got to hit a button and I was in euphoria. Um, I started posting in the Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> I got to, uh, I was sharing stuff in the group and one of the members, I think, I don't know if it's the YouTube group or the nineties group, um, Seth Sterling shared up some Felix cards to brighten my spirit. Wasn't giving them to me. Like he was just like, Hey, look what I have. Yeah, right. like it was basically a, a post hijack of my, my near death experience. Very 2020 response. Yeah. But he shared this guy, which I have a video coming for. I just don't know exactly how I want to do it. But for those of you who don't know, the patch up there is from the Dave Niehaus commemorative patch after he had passed away. It's part of the my oh my patch. I saw that thing and immediately messaged him like, Hey, what do you want for it? Nah, not for sale. All right. So every couple months I would just be like, like he would post in the group and I said, you want to sell me that patch card? Nah, good. All right. So I just, I forgot about it. And a few months ago, it was probably maybe June or July. I got a message from him. And he said, Hey, uh, I'm looking at downsizing some stuff. And if this is going to go to anybody, you need to have it. And he offered me a really good deal on it. And this became part of my collection. I think out of all the cards that you've picked up this year, I think I was the most excited about that one. And uh, I know Brent as well was because as Mariner fans, you know, Dave Niehaus, hearing him call a home run by your favorite player or strike out by your favorite player on the Mariners. Nothing can beat that. I do got a cool um, side piece to that card, though. A couple, yeah. Like a month later, like I had never seen these until Seth shared that one. And this one popped up. And it's the top of it. Like you got the microphone going in reverse. I can't do that. Mm -hmm. Got the microphone, start of Dave, and... 
this is really cool. And basically, I just wanted to, it's not often I get to share the D with everybody. So that's got a nice D right there. It's really nice. I'm so glad that somebody shared the D on the yep. podcast. It yep. was it was well worth the wait. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. I'd say that those are, those are, geez. I mean, if there, if there was a top three pickup, it's if there wasn't the uh, most unexpected card, I guess that one of those would make it in there. So. That, that would have been in there. I right. that would have probably been the top pickup just for just for what it means as a Mariner fan. Well, especially cool that it came from a community member. You know, somebody who you interacted with who who said that phrase. Like, if it went to anybody, I'd like it to go to you. I think Ryan, Southern Car Collector, has talked about that exact phrase, and I agree with him. Uh, let's go on to. Uh, the biggest disappointment of 2020, if there is one for you, what would it be? Uh, in general or just card collecting? <laughs> well, <laughs> let's stick to cards, you know, okay. uh, you know, other than you, you know, like your lung completely deflating on, on the podcast. Uh, <laughs> like, like, let's stick to cards. Was, was there any, any disappointments for you? Quite oh yeah. Well, I got it. My, yeah. So we were talking about the set breaks earlier. I have been trying to get my number one Buner card, the 97 finest embossed gold refracto. I missed out on it, I think, two years ago, a raw version. It sold for like 115 and I put in a bid that I thought was golden, and I missed out on it. Another one popped up in that set break. This guy had a PSA 10. I'm not a graded card collector. I don't care about them. I usually bust them out of the cases, but that was the one that was available. I'm like, all right, here's my chance. And again, I put in, I think my max bid was like 250. And I was like, I'm golden. Even a PSA 10, that's mine. Things sold for like 360. Uh, last second, it was somebody set up their snipe and just, pew! it was like Fennec Shand trying to snipe <laughs> Mando. <laughs> I agree with that. And I agree with the fact that you know, yeah, the sniper definitely came in, but the thing you have to remember is when I lose a card like that, and I sh I'm sure you're this way, at least you lost it for way more than you bid. Yeah. You're like, well, I guess I really didn't have a chance yeah. anyway, you know? Um, yeah, like, like I'm any usually, lining. I usually don't get too bummed if I miss out on a card, but <laughs> <laughs> I guess I could just take a screenshot of it, and I have the digital version yeah, now, right? That's true. Um, yeah, they're like we all have, I think, those one or two cards. You know, like you've got that Mount Everest, like the one or two, whether it's a 24 karat or the embossed gold refracto. When those come up, you're just like, oh, 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 oh it's mine. It's going to be mine. <laughs> and then when it just gets pulled out from under you, you're, just, you're deflated. You're just like, I am never going to own that card now. And you're like, it's, it's just disappointing. Yeah, it does. It takes the wind out of your sails, doesn't it? We all have stories like that this year, just because of the sheer volume of amazing cards yeah. that have been put out there. So, but do you agree with this? I mean, just a little side note. I was just talking to Tyler about this too. Do you think like every time you miss out on a big card, it's almost like clockwork? Something else really nice shows up that you couldn't have afforded if you won the original card, right? Yep. Um, that actually that second Felix patch. I don't remember what I lost, but I remember the day. I can actually tell you everything about that night. I was sitting on my couch. Uh, my daughter was was in her room. I was sitting with my wife. I was playing Final Fantasy VII, the HD remake, on my PS4. Love that game. And I, I was watching an auction. It was a Felix card I wanted, and I missed out on it. And I was like, oh, man. And I think I even messaged, messaged you, and I was like, dude, missed out on it. Mm -hmm. And like 20 minutes later, I refreshed and that card was on there i was like yep that's awesome dude gotta love when that happens i think anybody that's listening and watching you could agree that's definitely happened more than a few times you know it, it's it happened to me a lot this year and uh it helps when you're collecting multiple players though <laughs> you know what i mean because if you're only collecting one player it's just like especially when i was just collecting air it was deflating man like i cannot believe i lost that one but uh how would you, and I'll ask it the way I asked Tyler, because I like this. If you were to um, have a friend come over who doesn't necessarily know a lot about cards, knows who the players are, but doesn't know a lot about cards, how would you summarize the collection that you were about to show them? Like, this is what you're going to see. 
Well, I mean, how I would describe it is focused, yeah. um, but obviously that doesn't do anything to actually describe the collection. So I think if I were to describe it to them, it would be to go off of a, a Dave Niehaus commercial saying that he had true to the blue. There are, there's a few cards in there. Like, you know, I've got a couple very, very minor side PCs that aren't Mariners, but by and large, all I collect are Mariners. I collect the people that I watched. I collect the players that I rooted for. I like to collect players that I had some emotional attachment to, whether it's a Griffey or Buner or Franklin Gutierrez. And I think when you look through my boxes, you, you get a sense of who I was rooting for at any period of time in the Mariners history. As a Mariner fan, I got a lot of respect for that. And that's why when I come to visit my dad, who lives about five minutes that way from you, <laughs> which is pretty cool, other side of the road there, um, I'm excited to kind of look through there and, and have you show me just all the Mariners greatness that's within that collection. So that's going to be a fun day for me. All right, let's go on to, like, right now, currently, um, what is the most sentimental card that you own? It's not even baseball-related. Even better. Ah, oh, nice. All it's right, a, let's hear about it. Jiggly poof. <laughs> so my daughter is my absolute best friend in the world. I love to do everything with her. Like, we go... We go on walks together, we play games together, we play toys together, we build Legos together. She's the person that I love spending time with. And one of our favorite things to do, especially in the winter when we can't really go out and do as much kind of physical type things, you know, we can't ride bikes, we can't play basketball, can't play catch. We play a lot of Smash Brothers. And I always pick Jigglypuff when I play her. <laughs> One, it's it's one of the characters that's kind of fun. you can play with Jigglypuff really well because you can put the other character to sleep, which means I can interact with Jigglypuff, but not necessarily kill her. Which because <laughs> otherwise, a lot of times I have to find ways to creatively lose. Um, same when we're playing Mario Kart. Like sometimes, you know, I'll have to be like, "Oh, I dropped the remote." Oh, man. Oh, I accidentally fell off a cliff for the 93rd time. <laughs> so, you know, when I, when I play with Jigglypuff, I can actually interact and have a competitive game without actually killing her. So for Father's Day this year, I had there were some Griffey cards, and I think there were like some top loaders and a few other things. And there was that Jigglypuff card that my daughter saw um, at my local card shop, uh, DJ's in Renton fantastic place that we all go to um he sells like legos and he's got a little pokemon card display and she was looking through it and she saw that and decided i had to have it for father's day that's awesome i love it and i love that it's in a magnetic too because like oh yeah like my joey cora is in a very nice case because it holds so much meaning to me that's awesome man i did not know about that card See, we get to learn something new every day, even though I talk to you all the time. That's great, man. All right. Um, currently looking at the hobby, you know, we're kind of at the end of 2020. I know you and I both as guys that have new releases to look forward to coming out. What, what is most, what excites you the most about the hobby right now in its future? Um, honestly, the community. I know it's a, a little cliche to, to say something like that. And especially after you've heard me, <laughs> it's a little weird after I ranted about some of the weird parts of the community that kind of grate on your nerves. But it's a way for me to to have an outlet for my cards, because otherwise I'm literally just um, looking through boxes by myself. And like, you know, I pick up a card and I go to my wife and say, hey, look at this. And she goes, cool. And then it goes back in the box. And then, you know, <laughs> when I'm a lot of times I, I will sit in my my card room and I'll watch some TV and kind of thumb through and look at my cards. But having a community, it affords me an opportunity to interact and share my cards and have them be like, oh, that's really cool. And then they can also offer some input, be like, hey, if you like that, you might like this card. It's very similar. It's kind of in that same vein. I think you would really dig this. And it kind of gets to send me off on a little little card hunting adventure that I didn't know I was going to have. 
Um, finding new things is definitely something that excites me. Not even necessarily new releases, which I do love. Um, sometimes you're a little, as you mentioned, my guys aren't in a lot of things. Um, Felix and Jay weren't in all that many things this year. Griffey's in everything, but yeah, like I, I like playing Day Griffey for whatever reason. So a lot of times I'll see new releases like the uh, Tops Chrome Black, and that set is stunning. Like that is Salma Hayek circa Dogma, stunning. And I have nobody to to pick up out of it, so I don't get to to pick up anything from there. But I do still get to go back and find, especially in Griffey's Reds career, because for years, all I wanted were Mariner Griffey. So I've got this big, vast sea of cards to collect that I don't know a whole lot about. Like I said, I from like 02 to 06, maybe, I didn't really, I wasn't really in the hobby. So there's this huge gap that I can go back and find new cards and things that I've just never really seen. That's exciting, dude. That's awesome. And, and there's always something to chase when you look at it that way, you know. Um, yeah, that's it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting to see though too, you know, if your your guy Felix if he ends up pitching for the Braves or pitches for somebody else and is able to get a few cards out there. Um, obviously, we've talked about his post playing career. Once he's able to get to the Hall of Fame, he'll definitely get some more cards thrown in some sets like tribute and things like that. So, I think so. Uh, yeah, hope so for you. For sure. Um, if you could change one thing about the hobby and where it's at right now, what do you think it would be? Oh, that's easy. I want variety. Variety is the spice mine of Kessel life. Um, I don't just mean... <laughs> I don't just mean brands. Um, like you've mentioned Panini. Uh Brent over there, his favorite set of this year was, or one of them at least, was Select. Absolutely loves the moonshot um, Nelson Cruz's he has. We love the designs of these cards, but let's be honest. If you were to say, this is a card, do you like it? You don't really care who made that, right? Like, you don't care if Topps made a card or if Select made it. All you care is the design. And I think they go hand in hand. I think that a variety of manufacturers leads to a variety of card designs just due to that competition. Like you can't all be making the exact same thing. But at the end of the day, all I want is a bigger variety. Um, I love parallels. I love rainbows. You love rainbows. LeVar Burton loves rainbows. Um, Rainbow Dash from My Little Pony. Not so much a rainbow fan. She's big into the Allen and Ginter minis, but Mario you would Kart think, loves rainbows. Don't forget yeah. Mario Kart. I mean. um, but every set doesn't have to have a rainbow. Every set doesn't have to have a blue parallel, a red parallel, a green parallel, a gold parallel, a black parallel. And it feels like they're just cut, copying and pasting their card design from one set to the next. And at that point, it, it loses a little bit of its luster. Mm -hmm. um, your favorite set of the year. Top's Finest. One of the reasons that that set was so stunning was they kind of brought that old feel to Refractors back. Yep. It, it had that a little bit of um, a little bit of that etching, at least it looked like to me. I haven't picked any up. Um, it kind of had that it had that feel of wow. Whereas I like to pick up some cool Felixes from say Top's Chrome. They largely all look the same. Um, you don't see things like Crusades or Essential Credentials or any of the Pacific die cuttings. Like they had the, um, I can't remember the name of the insert set they had with the foul pole or the net or anything like that yeah, in there. Foul pole net fusions. Yep. That's it. Mm -hmm. You don't really see stuff like that anymore. It's just kind of, there's, they, they it's like they have a checklist and like, well, we got to have autos. We got to have parallels. We got to have relics. And at the end of the day, the thing that hits the cutting room floor is creativity and design and uniqueness. And I would love to see that come back into the hobby. And I don't think we're going to get it until either one of two things happens. One, 
you get manufacturers coming back. You get Upper Deck or Panini gets a license. Um, I think that will help a lot because at that point, then you just got people going, all right, they're doing this. We got to do something different if we want to stand out. Or you have to have collectors just say no. Mm-hmm. Like you never want like a, a collecting revolution. You don't want collectors to be like, nah, nah, I'm good. I don't, I don't want that anymore. But if we all buy it every year, there's no incentive for tops to do anything different. If if card prices are continuing to go up on the retail end, if tops is continuing to sell out the product that they make, um, there is no incentive for tops to to innovate. There, there really isn't. Right. Well, I'm going to agree 100% with what you just said. So I don't even need to go and, and add to that because that would be a dream come true. You know, like case it inserts and inserts that have die cutting and laser cutting. We can only hope, right? <clears throat> yeah. <coughs> so second to last question. If money was not an issue and you could buy any card you wanted, what would that one card be? Hmm. I think if I'm gonna I'm gonna approach the question from a standpoint of a card that I I couldn't generally buy. Yep. So I, I don't want I don't want to say a card that I could just go out and buy today. Um, I've got I don't know which one it would be. Can I say two? I guess we'll let you have that uh, luxury since uh, you know you almost died on the podcast <laughs> at one point. So go ahead. I was a trooper too. I came back on it. You did. I had no idea. No idea, man. <laughs> Which two cards do you think they would be? Uh, the '98 Ultra, Pla- uh, not Platinum Medallion, um, masterpiece of Ken Griffey Jr. Okay. That's the- I I love the Jay Buhner one, and I've got the gold, and I've got the Platinum J, but that Griffey is my favorite gold medallion ever. That. That swing on the card is stunning. It is Vanessa Marcel, the rock stunning. Yep. Um, Nailed that, it. <laughs> that would be the one from that set. But also the 99 Ultimate Victory, Ultimate Victory Parallel of Griffey. The, the yellow 101? Yep. Gotcha. That's like the weirdest naming um, construct ever. They've got the Ultimate Victory is the set. They've got an ultimate parallel, a victory parallel, and an ultimate victory parallel. Well, leave it to Upper Deck to do something unique. That's why we need them back. That's why we need them back. Well, Ryan, it's been a, an absolute pleasure having you on here. And, uh, you know, really happy that, you know, we've been able to kind of connect starting, you know, at the beginning of this year. And, uh, you know, it's nice to have a friend who reminds you not to, not to take things too seriously, but also to find the simple joys in the hobby. And also, you know, you've, you've been a big part of helping me get into modern and navigating those waters. It's been, it's been rough at times, expensive at times, but it's been certainly fun to share, you know, the rainbow, the leprechaun adventures of card collecting in the modern world, uh, looking for the gold at the end of the rainbow. But, uh, also a lot of fun so thank you for that but to end our interview sadly uh what would be the one word you would use to just summarize everything we talked about today well i thought about that actually um because i know you're obviously i i have seen all of your interviews you've done so i knew you would be asking me that and i was i thought about going wordy a la brent (laughs) then i thought then i thought about coming up with a perfect one word seinfeld reference but every seinfeld reference i can think of is multiple words i think the only one that truly applies is a short and simple fun i like it it has been fun and that would describe you as a collector too. You're always having fun, whether you're messaging an eBay seller for a card that looks like it should be buried just to give it its proper uh, burial, or you know whether you're uh, you know showing off your cards and with music in the background and, and no not no speaking or 
finding Mario Lemieux cards hidden behind a fridge. That I pretty, I mean, all those things pretty much sum up you as a collector. And uh, I think you have a lot to offer on your YouTube channel for people in that aspect. So I do want to say to everybody, go check out Cards and Recreation on YouTube again. The channel that I showed, I think you will be uh, quite pleased with finding your way over there and checking out Ryan's channel. And uh, yeah, thanks again, Ryan, for taking the time to come on here, man. Really appreciate it. Thank you very much for having me. And with that, I'm out. <laughs> He's out of here. <laughs> no, no, just kidding. Just kidding. Uh, so next episode, if I have my schedule correctly, uh, next couple episodes are going to be going to be enjoyable because we've got a couple of Ripken collectors that are going to come on here. So uh, depending on how the schedules work, I'm, I'm going to have Will Spence back on. You've you've seen him. Uh, you know, he, he loves collecting uh, Cal Ripken, and he's, he's got some amazing things to show that he hasn't shown before. And then right after him, I'm going to have, uh, next Sunday, I'm going to have Andy Burkett on, who will be the only person that will join me on these interviews that has literally so, had to sell everything. And now he's slightly, kind of slowly getting back into collecting again. I think it's going to be really interesting to hear from somebody who collects Ripken and would never sell anything to somebody who had to sell it all. Um, so quite excited to have them on. Uh, but again, Ryan, thank you. Uh, thank you to everybody who came and, and hung out. I really appreciate that. And I hope you all have a great uh, rest of your Sunday. Take care. <laughs>